Hello and welcome to Norwood News. Today is Friday, October 6th, and I'm your host, Kristen McDonald. It is great to have you with us as we end another week here in Norwood. This week on Norwood News, Patty Fanning has a new book. The Rec Department has some fall activities planned, but first, the NHS boys and girls soccer teams held their annual Pink Out and Morales Cup games earlier this week. This is a chance for the athletes to do their part to help in such great causes. The Pink Out raises awareness for breast cancer, while the Morales Cup honors Fernando Morales, an NHS student who lost his battle to cancer in 2015. Assistant girls soccer coach Caitlin Brinklow had the opportunity to play with Morales in high school. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a great way to honor him. He loved soccer, and I think he just had such a big impact on the soccer program while he was here and on boys and girls teams. It gets the girls involved in cancer awareness and other things around the community and, and kind of builds up the whole community of Norwood and combines the boys and girls teams together. So it just, I feel like it brings a lot of people together in a positive way. The girls soccer captains explain what it means to be part of this special event. I think as a team we know it's more than a game, like we're playing for a bigger cause today and we all just like want to give it our all and see what we can do. I agree with Lauren, um, obviously we try our best and play hard every game but for this game it means a lot because we're playing for a cause, for something important, so everyone really puts it all on the field. Um, I think like to our team like we always love like having a reason to play especially and today's probably the biggest reason we get to play all year so I think we're all just really excited to you know fight for a cause and stuff. I think it's really special that like our entire program gets to give back something more to our community and help raise money for a special cause. First year boys soccer coach John Lockhead speaks of continuing this honorable tradition. Yeah so I actually uh, graduated the same year as Fernando. Uh, I grew up in Walpole so I got to I play against him a bunch of times. Um, he's a great kid, great player. Um, so we're really looking forward to honoring him tonight and then also hopefully we can get a big win also to, to honor him. So we've been working hard all season, um, just getting closer and closer. So hopefully it can come all together with this, with this great occasion tonight. It feels special being out here, representing my team and uh, being able to play and um, just uh, let his name live on. Uh, yeah, it's just great uh, to get out here, play hard, give it our best, and yeah, it's just what town sports is all about, like going out, having fun, just giving it our all. Hopefully we can win. Since opening in Norwood back in 2020, the Skating Club of Boston has hosted numerous community events that brings joy and fun to the Norwood community and surrounding towns. The Skating Club of Boston is hosting an event to honor Dick Button, who was an integral part of the world skating community. Jack McCarthy catches up with Doug Zegheib. Yes, the Dick Button Artistic Skating Festival, which is really a day of seminars here, um, workshop seminars for kids interested in exploring the program component side of their skating, the artistic side of their skating, and then on the evening of the 14th, we have a show, uh, the evening showcase, and the five companies that are going to be with us during the day are all presenting performances with introductions by their artistic directors, performances, and a special guest star performance by Jeremy Abbott four-time U.S. champion and two-time Olympian. And let's just talk about Dick Button, because his story's pretty good. Oh, Dick's you know, an amazing guy. It was post-World War II. I think it was the 48 Olympics he was a champ, and then 52. Four, yep, two-time men's Olympic champion. And in between that, what was he? Uh, five-time world champ? Five-time world champ, maybe nine-time U.S. champ. Yeah. One of the big innovators in the sport, the first one to do a triple in competition, the triple loop. Um, all these moves that he devised are still done today. Now. Your family knew him quite well. Yes. Oh, my God, yes. Uh, my mom knew him. My mom worked with him. And, and Dick is actually, my mom's not alive, but Dick is alive. Uh, they were both really into flowers and gardens, and they did tours together. Yes. It, Mutual passions in flowers and skating. And it was kind of an interesting story how he ended up at the Skating Club of Boston. Well, he came here to train when he um, got admitted to Harvard University. So when he came up here, he moved from New York to Boston and then started representing the Skating Club of Boston and was with us for four or five years uh, through his second Olympic gold medal. But Harvard wasn't his first choice. No, no, no. We don't talk about the other school. <laughs> this other school <laughs> wouldn't allow him to uh, skate. But... Right, this other school in uh, 
But Connecticut, the, I guess yeah, it was. I, yeah, <laughs> some, some trade school. Some trade school, yeah. exactly. But anyway, you know, that was their loss. And, oh, and, yeah, Dick's tremendous. Um, Dick, not only, you know, two-time Olympic men's champion, but he's also really shaped the sport in the United States. The voice of figure skating on ABC Sports for so long created events, the World Professional Championships he started. He really has made figure skating in the United States what it is today. To watch the full interview and to see all the happenings at the Skating Club of Boston, please tune into Noid Digest next Thursday at 7 p.m. for a brand new episode. When Noid News returns, Patty Fanning has a new book out there, Clayton Cheever talks banned books, and Ron Marshallsea has the latest in sports. Noid author and historian Patty Fanning has written another book about the history of her hometown. The topic is the Old Parish Cemetery, and Wednesday night, Fanning spoke to a packed Simone room at the Morrill Library. Fanning explained why she wrote about the cemetery and what she hopes the reader will learn. So I wrote this book because the Old Parish Preservation Volunteers have been working in the Old Parish Cemetery for five years now. And it was time to document the history of the cemetery and the history of this organization that has worked so hard to preserve it. I hope reader, readers take away from this book um, a sense of the people who made Norwood a community. Um, they're not famous. They're just a group of people who started a town, um, actually started South Dedham, which wasn't even a town, but a little village. And they're a community of people who I believe should be remembered. So what I've tried to do is talk about the people, um, the community, and its place within the history of Massachusetts and the nation. So I sort of hope people get the context of these people in their times. Fanning's collection of books documents Norwood's history for future generations, and the town of Norwood says thank you. In addition, thank you to all the volunteers who repair, clean, and maintain the Old Parish Cemetery. Speaking of books, this past week, the Morrow Memorial Library held an event called Let Freedom Read at the Norwood Town Common. Library Director Clayton Cheever tells us the importance of an event like this. What we want to teach together uh, here is we've got the Chief of Police uh, joining us, we have the Chief of the Fire Department, we have Bill O'Donnell, uh, the, the stage registrar, and um, we're all coming together to celebrate one of the pillars of this country, which is the freedom of speech. Freedom of speech is only meaningful if you can also read. Uh, if you can't read whatever you want, somebody's controlling what you have access to, what in intellectual ideas you can actually even engage with. So as a public library, we take very seriously the importance of the freedom of speech and the ability to read whatever you want. A lot of people are frightened by things that are new. One of the things when we think about why these are being challenged, what I think is even more illustrative is you look at the voices that are being silenced. And we know when we look at the, t the titles that are being challenged, it's overwhelmingly people of color uh, and it's members of the LGBT community and their voices that are being silenced by these bannings. So really what I want to do is I don't like focusing on the bannings. I want to lift voices up so we can learn from everybody in our community and create a better future for all of us. I think it made me feel like part of the community, like to be able to, you know, because sometimes you know you read by yourself but when you're doing it together quietly just really enjoying human creativity and human literature just as a community that was really intense um, because it's everyone that you know you know it was myself you know the police chief the fire chief all of us who see each other in these other contexts but in this moment all coming together and sort of sharing what were each other reading and why did we choose what we chose and it was just it was a really it was a really good feeling. When we look at the numbers, it's actually a very small number of people that are doing the challenging. 
PEN AMERICA uh, HAS WRITTEN A REPORT ACROSS, uh, LOOKING AT BOOK CHALLENGES ACROSS THE COUNTRY, AND THEY FOUND OVERWHELMINGLY, LIKE, like over, I think it was over 90% of the challenges don't, you double check my percentages, but were, the challenges were by only 11 people. So we actually know that a very small number of people have figured out how to use modern media to be very loud and to control what the rest of us have access to read. The vast majority of Americans are very in favor of freedom to read, and that's why we're here. We're not telling you what to read, we're not promoting any idea over any other, just that we're all better when we have individual choice and that freedom and you're I'm not telling you and you're not telling me what I can read just really pleased we got such a beautiful day I hope that the rest of the week is, is similarly nice and everybody is able to find a good book they like you know the other thing I would add is there's just so much to read if you're reading something and you find it's not for you put it down we are surrounded in the library by so many more books than any of us will ever have time in our lives to read so if you don't like it stop read something else uh, that's what I encourage there is just such a world out there to engage with. Uh, I'd really, there's some serious issues today that we need people, uh, I think we can all agree, we need to figure out how we have so much more in common than we have that sets us, that, that is different. How do we look for more points of commonality uh, so we can together walk to that future that we want to create? Now let's toss it over to Lucy Scafati for the latest in school news. I'm Lucy Scafati and I'm a senior at Norwood High School. Let's take a look at some activities happening in our Norwood schools this week. In Norwood High School News, 612 Math Department Chair Bob Harris started a math challenge last year at the Coakley Middle School, and this year it includes NHS. The recent results were shared on the student broadcast NHS Update. The solution for the Mustang Challenge is now out and is, drumroll please, here is the solution and the winners of the September Mustang Challenge. There are winners in five categories. Most creative approach, best explainers, innovative thinkers, critical thinkers, and problem pioneers. The random drawing winner will be announced tomorrow. Next up is the October Mustang Challenge. Here is the October problem and it is now live. At the Coakley Middle School, adding play is one way of learning and students in Ms. Serrata's computer class are doing just that. This week, students are continuing their exploration of coding microbits by programming and playing the classic rock, paper, scissors game. Can you beat the microbit? Ms. Serrata invites Coakley students to stop by room 109 for other fun activities happening in the computer lab. Here's, and I'm going to be playing rock, paper, scissors with this. The sword is the paper, the shirt is the paper, wait, sorry. The sword is the scissors, the shirt is the paper, and the small cube is the rock. Really, let's see if we'll win. So I'll go first. Wait a minute. Alright, I got a rock. Let's see what, what, what the micro bit gets. Ah, oh, dang it. I, well, I lost. I said, Bye. The Callahan School had a very successful back to school night. Many families came to visit classrooms and the book fair. Principal Scarlett Grant would like to thank everyone for their contribution and dedication to the Callahan community. At the Prescott School, teachers have laid the groundwork for our new social emotional learning curriculum, Character Strong, by implementing the kindness kickoff during the month of September. In each classroom, students completed a respect agreement. The Prescott 3 has been on display around the building and the classrooms. The Prescott 3 highlights the three expectations that students will follow. Be respectful, be responsible, be kind. Ms. Reyna, the school adjustment counselor, hosted a school-wide assembly that showcased the new character trait for October, respect. Students danced and sang along to the character Strong Respect song in shared ways they can show respect in their classroom, at specials, in the cafeteria, and at recess. Prescott will have a Student of the Month program where teachers can nominate any students they feel are role models for that month's character trait. Students will be honored at the next school-wide assembly and will also receive a certificate recognition on the morning announcements. And a special spot in Principal Riley's newsletter home to families. We are looking forward to seeing all the outstanding role models at Prescott. One of the school-wide priorities at the Willett School is social and emotional learning. Social emotional learning is an educational method that aims to foster social and emotional skills within the school curriculum. This year, the Willett has begun using a curriculum called Second Step to teach social skills, empathy, and expected behavior. This program helps the students build skills for success. 
Students had a blast celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month at the Little Mustangs Preschool. Many classrooms had dance parties to different Spanish songs with maracas, drums, and cowbells, and learned words in Spanish, played Hispanic Heritage Bingo, and spent a lot of time exploring the life of Frida Kahlo. Check out the flower crown some classes made for Frida by using fine motor skills by ripping and crumbling tissue paper. Students also made a flower crown at Play-Doh using Frida Play-Doh mats. The craft areas were busy with flower painting and self-portrait work. At Block Area, using visual inspiration, students were challenged to build Frida's famous house in Mexico City. Well, that's it for school news. The students are always learning, and thanks to all the educators who share their school news with us. Now, let's get the latest in sports from Ron Marshallsey. I'm Ron Marshallsey, and this is your sports update. Before we get into scores, the football team got a visit from the Roach Brothers sideline suite Tuesday afternoon. I talked with John Chase, the man who drove the suite up to the NHS, to learn more about what it is and how it works on game days. Roach Brothers uh, lo loves to get back to the communities that they're in, and um, this is a unique way they're doing it now uh, for football. So every year we um, pick schools that um, are in towns that uh, they have store locations, and we donate the truck to the school and the school gets to raffle the truck off or auction the truck off and they keep 100% of the money. The only thing they have to do is give us a parking spot next to the field, it's called the sideline suite, and the truck is fully stocked with food from their um, deli platters, their potty platters, um, drinks, autographed football from David Andrews, um, we give a Roach Brothers gift card. Um, it's just, it's all set up, you watch the, you know, your Bob Kraft for a game. We raised, you know, anywhere between, depending on the size of the school, between, you know, five hundred uh, as much as eighteen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars for a school in a single game, and it all goes to the school. Can leave your pads outside. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Folks from Norwood shop at, uh, you know, Westwood Roach Brothers. So, um, you know, that this is one of the schools we'd love to do in the future. If, uh, if you'd have us get a new field going in recently, so um, once things settle in and you guys have been able to see the truck, hopefully we can come back. It's just a, it's a great program, and it's just fun to see the winners every week. The, whoever wins this truck, it's uh, it, you know, it's always an exciting thing for them. You know what I mean? And uh, and even the folks that don't win are happy for them. It adds a little excitement to the game. And uh, and we've had good luck. We have a winning record. When the truck's on site, usually the home team wins. The football team traveled to Medfield last Friday night, and after a pep talk from New England Patriots defensive end Dietrich Wise, they dominated the Warriors in a 34 to nothing win. On 18 carries, Jack Dwyer ran for 196 yards and two touchdowns. The Mustangs were ranked number six in the MIAA Power Rankings when they hosted the number two ranked Holliston Panthers this past Thursday night. NCM and HCAT, Holliston's community media station, both broadcast the game live. And this game was Boston 25's Game of the Week. And let me tell you, it lived up to the big game expectations. Halston looked like they had control, making big stops in key moments and answering with a kick return touchdown after Norwood scored their first. It was 17-13 Halston going into the half and they made it 24-13 on their first drive of the third quarter. But this Mustang team did not roll over, they did not give up and answered with a double reverse pass touchdown to Matty Mahoney from fellow captain Ryan Keneally to make it 24-19. From there, it was the Norwood defense that stepped up, making huge stops and won massive forced fumble by Brian Dearborn. With just two minutes left in the game, Mahoney gets the Mustangs into the red zone with a beautiful pass to his favorite target, Brian Dearborn. And with 22 seconds left in the game, Mahoney runs it in for his fourth touchdown of the night and putting the Mustangs up by one. On the final play of regulation, Jared Tinlin got the sack to give Norwood the win, 25-24. Mahoney would finish the game with 221 rushing yards. The football team will go to Ashland next Friday night, October 13th, kickoff at 7 o'clock. The field hockey team is now 9-1 with three goal wins over both Braintree and Dedham on September 29th and October 2nd, respectively. Shay Larkey continued her dominance as she scored a hat-trick in the Braintree game and two more goals against Dedham. Bridget Sopel also notched a goal in the 3-1 victory. The Mustangs host Dover Sherborne Friday the 6th at 6.30, which will be their Pink Night fundraiser. 
NCM broadcast the soccer doubleheader live on Wednesday with the boys and girls soccer teams going against Dedham. The Mustangs hosted Dedham during their pink night and even with tough play and excellent goalkeeping from Trisha Wachowski, the girls did not get the win. The girls team went to Walpole and Norton this past week as well but lost both of those matches too. The team will be at Dover Shoreborne Tuesday the 10th at 4 o'clock. The boys soccer team hosted Norton on the 3rd but couldn't pull out the win. The boys game against Dedham was the Morales Cup in honor of former NHS student and soccer player Fernando Morales. They did not get the win, but the story in this one as well was fantastic goalkeeping. John Lynch was great for the Mustangs, and Dedham's keeper got his third consecutive shutout. The boys' soccer team will also be playing Dover Sherborne on the 10th at 4, but at home. Both cross-country teams ran against Westwood this week, but neither came out victorious. The teams will be at Medfield on the 11th at 4 o'clock. The girls' volleyball team went to Westwood Tuesday afternoon, but after a good battle and close game, the Mustangs did not get the win. Julia Alves and Sophia Tuma both had big contributions for the Mustangs. The team also played Sharon at home on the 5th and won 3-1. Serena Elias and Natalie Gale had big games at the net, and Julia Figueroa and Molly Federico were forces on defense. The Mustangs now sit at 4-8 and, and will travel to Holliston on the 11th at 5-15. And finally, the golf team beat Weymouth on Monday, 244 to 268. Tommy O'Brien and Ben Finkston both shot a 38, and Teddy Caparata shot a 39. The Mustangs lost to Medfield on Tuesday, but got right back in the win column with a 249 to 265 win over Millis on Wednesday. Four Mustangs shot 41 in this one: Tommy O'Brien, Teddy Caparata, Frankie Sheehan, and Maximo DeLuca. And with the win over Millis, the Mustangs sit at eight and three and have qualified for the state tournament. Congratulations, guys. And that is all I have for this sports update. I'm Ron Marshallsee, and Norwood News will be right back after this break. If you're looking for a new place to grab food, some new entertainment, or just curious to see what cool places the town of Norwood has, tune into the Community Channel to see what Norwood has in store. Our living local segments chronicle the many different and entertaining spots in Norwood. From your favorite smoothie bowl at the juice bar to a new set of specs at Modern Eyes, Norwood's got something for everyone. Since retiring, NCM has kept Jack McCarthy pretty busy. On Wednesday, Jack caught up with the crew down at the Coakley Middle School construction site to get a monthly update on the progress and what we have to look forward to in the coming months. And now we're back and we're at the uh, site of Coakley Middle School Construction. Joining me once again from W.T. Rich is their senior project manager, Bethany King. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me again. So what's been going on since we were here last? Honestly, a lot of foundation work, which is the, the concrete. So as you see behind us, we're working over here, which is called Zone A. This is the last section of the building. We're wrapping up in the next week, week and a half with that work. So you can see the foundations here. You can see all of these uh, pieces of these bolts sticking up. They're called anchor bolts. So steel is going to go on those next. Uh, but right now you can see the foundation wall. This is where your brick will sit. Um, we've built it all around the whole perimeter of the building, and then we have all these isolated footings within the building. And so A is going to be the last one you've finished with the foundations. Yep, exactly. So the first one is where the auditorium is? Uh, the first one was C, which is where we were standing last time. When we were last time, we were standing in the gym. Oh, I don't gym. know if you remember. I do now. And now, <laughs> yeah, now this time, actually, we're forming the auditorium, which is a recessed area there with, the, with your large stadium seating in there. So that's what we're actively working on today. Okay. And so... Um, these pads and they're just for steel that's what that's what that's for to anchor the steel yep so their footings there and the steel will sit on those there's leveling plates there and the steel's all currently actively being prefabricated up in Canada at our shop up there um, and they're working on bringing it down so how deep does the foundation go uh, from where we're standing here about three to four feet deeper um, actually probably four to five to be honest uh, there's a there's a foundation wall you can see here and then at the bottom of this wall is a whole footing that supports the perimeter so we've we've built it we've stripped the formwork and then we've backfilled it so we're standing on the backfield material now and and the 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 pads over there how deep do they go those go, those goes pretty much as deep right okay. so they're about f five feet deep call it on average um, and again, those have footings and then they have little piers that the anchor bolts stick out of and they get cast into when we pour it. Okay. So there's, gonna, there's a lot of work that has to get done here. 
before we pour the concrete floor. Yep, yep. So, it, we basically build it and then bury it. So you can, it looks <laughs> like we're not doing much, but, but yeah, we do a lot of underground work. And actually right now, um, in some of the areas of the building, we are putting some underground uh, electrical conduits and plumbing piping, and we're going to be actively working on that over the next three months as well, with the goal of everything under the ground gets in before we pour that top concrete floor here. It's called a slab on grade on this first floor. Okay, great. Anything else I need to know that what's accomplished since last time? Nope, just a lot of concrete. <laughs> Cement, that's, that's what my head's made of. <laughs> There are a lot of events happening at the library for the month of October. Clayton Cheever gives us this month's edition of Moral Moment. Greetings from the Moral Memorial Library, Norwood's public library for everyone. I'm Clayton Cheever. I use he, his pronouns, and I'm your library director. I'd like to tell you about a few things happening here at the library this October. For several months, we've been enjoying hosting the Stuart Plumer Author Series. Made possible by generous donations from his family and friends, this series honors Stuart and the many, many years of service he gave to the library and the greater Norwood community. He served as a trustee for over 30 years. When he retired, he seeded the series that was renewed after he died just last year. On Sunday afternoon, October 22nd, starting at 3, we're hosting children's author Rajani LaRocca. A very prolific writer of books for young readers, winner of the Newbery Honor for a middle grade novel in verse, the Walter Dean Myers Award, the New England Book Award, and many other honors, Dr. LaRocca is also a practicing physician at Massachusetts General Hospital. This program will be tailored for people ages 7 and up and will differ in form from the past several in this series when I interviewed authors. Registration is required for this event, so please visit our website, visit us, or give us a call and save your spot today while there's still one available. There are a lot of programs going on at the library this month, and I strongly encourage you to check out our calendar to discover what you want to attend. One that I expect is going to be quite popular, we're presenting in partnership with the Massachusetts Cultural Council, the Norwood Planning Department, the Department of Public Works, and the Police Department, is called Weathering the Storm, Big Stories from Norwood and Beyond, on Thursday evening, October 26th, starting at 7. You've likely heard of the Moth Radio Story Hour. Well, join us for the Morrow Memorial Library Storm Story Hour. If you have a storm story to tell that you can tell in five minutes or less, we want to hear it. We only have 15 slots available for storytellers, so grab one quickly. There are many more available spots for people who simply want to attend and listen. We'll be joined by Assistant Director of Community Development, Holly Jones, Police Chief William Brooks, and Town Engineer Mark Ryan, who will talk about their experiences too. Learn more on our website, where you can also reserve your seat, or visit or call us, and we'll be happy to help. One program that you do not, do not have to register for and that you can do any time during the month is our Halloween hunt. This is our inaugural hosting of this hunt and we're really excited about it. Starting on October 1st, you can download a Halloween hunt card from our website or sign up through our Beanstack app. There are four basic steps. One, assemble a team of up to five players and get ready. Two, choose from four difficulty levels. Teams can compete as as many as four hunt card levels as they dare. Three, go a hunting. Your hunt card will have clues that you have to find answers to around town. Locations vary, but they're all within Norwood. Every hunt card that's fully completed and returned to the library by Tuesday, October 31st, will give that team an entry to win our grand prize. So don't forget our fourth and final step, turn in your card. Look to our website or come by the library for more information. We are so grateful to all the partners around town that are helping make this happen. The library will be open every day this month, seven days a week, including the weekends, with the exception of Monday, October 9th for Columbus slash Indigenous Peoples Day. We're always happy to see you when you come by, but we also totally understand that life continues during the hours when our building's closed. That's why we have so many resources that are available every hour of the day, every day of the year, accessible through our website and mobile apps. Every month, I enjoy highlighting different online resources you can get for free. Did you know that you have unlimited access to read the New York Times online, both within the library and anywhere you can connect to the internet provided by our membership in the Minuteman Library Network? That's right, with a library card, you can say goodbye to their paywall. 
In the library, it's super easy. Just go to NewYorkTimes.com. You'll see you have unlimited access here from our computers and when you're using our Wi-Fi network from your personal mobile device. When you're out and about or simply at home, you simply need to get a code for digital access. Visit our website at NorwoodLibrary.org, follow the link to databases under the research menu to find the alphabetical list of online resources, and select the link for home access to the New York Times to get started. Now I've brought some books with me today I'm excited to tell you about. I had to bring along several of Dr. Rajani LaRocca's books to further entice you to attend her program here on the 22nd. Here I have Red, White, and Whole, the award-winning middle grade novel in verse that poet and author Nikki Grimes called ambitious, heartbreaking, and soul-satisfying. La Roca's first novel, Midsummer's Mayhem, recognized by the Massachusetts Book Awards, where 11-year-old Mimi confronts magical mysteries in a contemporary fantasy retelling of Shakespeare's Midsummer's Night's Dream, I have the companion book, Much Ado About Baseball, which hits a home run with fast-paced storytelling about friendship, fitting in, and finding yourself, and this enchanting picture book, Where Three Oceans Meet, about a family's journey to the southernmost tip of India and their adventures along the way. Check them out and come meet the author later this month. I've also brought a couple of books for more experienced readers. V. Castro wrote this horror novel, The Haunting of Alejandra. It's a story of a woman often defined by her familial relationships, a wife, mother, and a daughter. But no one sees that at her core, she's a woman struggling with a darkness that threatens to consume her, a ghostly vision of a crying woman in a ragged white gown, La Llorona, the vengeful and murderous mother of Mexican legend. Alejandra has inherited a lot of pain, but her foremothers have also given her strength and courage that she has to draw on to survive. Castro's book was published last spring. This next book is a little over five years old. You may be familiar with Dave Eggers from his memoir, A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius, his work as a founder of the independent publishing company and human website McSweeney's, his fiction for adults and young readers, and maybe his nonfiction. He's been a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, the National Book Award, and the National Book Critics Circle Award, and he's the recipient of the Dayton Literary Peace Prize, the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Award for Education, and the American Book Award, among, I'm sure, many others. This nonfiction book, The Monk of Mokha, is an incredibly readable historical biography about the triumphant adventures of a young Yemeni American who dreams of resurrecting the ancient art of Yemeni coffee but finds himself trapped in his home country as Saudi bombs rain down and he struggles to find a way out without sacrificing his dreams or abandoning his people. I could talk about books all day, but we have so much here at the, more here at the library. Usually, I like to take a moment here to talk about our library of things, and I encourage you to check it out online to get inspired for all the ways you can benefit from our shared treasures. Now today, I'm excited to share a seasonal program we're facilitating. Starting last month and going through Halloween, we're happy to present a Halloween costume swap. Bring in your gently used Halloween costumes and give them a chance for a second trick-or-treat. If you don't have a costume yet this year, stop by and see what we have available. We're accepting costumes for both children and adults as long as they're family friendly and in good condition. We're collecting donations in a large bin and organizing and hanging up ones for you to browse on racks located just inside the hallway in the entrance to the children's room. After Halloween, any leftover costumes will be donated. I'm wearing one of the donations today. We want to thank our friends at Progress Norwood for their support with this program. Please come by the children's room or give us a call if you have any questions. Before I go, I want to say a quick thank you to the amazing friends of the library. I want to personally invite you to come visit their refurbished permanent book sale in the room just to the left of the entrance that until recently housed our copier before we got a new one and moved it out to the floor. There are also some great finds and prices couldn't be more affordable. I need to start this paragraph over again. I messed up with a, a word there. Sorry. Thank you. Before I go, I want to say a quick thank you to the amazing friends of the library. I want to personally invite you to come visit their refurbished permanent book sale in the room just to the left of the entrance that until recently housed our copier before we got a new one and moved it out onto the floor. There are always some great finds, and the price couldn't be more affordable. The friends are also holding their annual fall book sale upstairs in the Simone room the weekend of October 14th and 15th. 
please come by and support the friends as they support the library and make possible so much of the programming we offer. This has been a moral moment. From everyone here at the library, I wish you and yours a safe and happy October. We look forward to seeing you in the library. The Norwood Rec Department has a packed schedule full of fun fall activities for all ages. Program Coordinator Marie Kidd gives us the rundown of events for the month of October. Hi everyone, it's Marie at the Norwood Rec Department. It's October, so for us here that means it's Fall Fest. We're super excited. Fall Fest is going to kick off this Sunday, October 8th, with something totally new to us here, goat yoga. We've got three sessions. Um, seems really popular because it filled immediately. There are 45 minutes of yoga with goats followed by 15 minutes of cuddle time with the goats. Sounds really cool. Um, so for everyone that registered, we'll see you down at the Haas Pool area this Sunday. Another event we have is later on on Sunday, we've got the annual pumpkin float. That's going to be at the Haas Pool area. It starts around 5.30. We're going to have food trucks. We've got a DJ. We are lucky enough to have the Cub Scouts selling s'mores kits and they'll have fire pits there. And we're super excited that we've got the Norwood Trails Committee this year. They are hosting a lantern walk um, through the field, to the, through the trails down at Endine. Um, we're really lucky to have them. That'll be at six o'clock. And then around 6.45, we're gonna float a bunch of pumpkins. If you've never been, it's really exciting. Come on down. Um, it's a free event. Come down, check it out. The following weekend, we have on Friday the 13th, we are showing Hocus Pocus on the Norwood Common. That's for free, so grab a blanket or a chair and some dinner. Come on down around six o'clock. And then the next morning, Saturday the 14th, we have right back here at our DPW lot, probably one of the biggest events of the year, Trunk or Treat. You do not need to register for that. We would love it if you could just bring um, a small donation or some canned goods. All of that goes directly to the Norwood Food Pantry. Um, and we have about a dozen trunks that'll be back there and the kids wear their costumes and they can go trunk or treating in the DPW lot. Um, later in the month, we have a Halloween hop. That is exciting because that's gonna be at the Senior Center. So we've got little ones and we're gonna have some of our seniors at that. We have several um, times where we're gonna have pumpkin decorating at the end of the month. So Fall Fest is kicking off this weekend and we couldn't be more excited about it. If you can't make any of our events for Fall Fest, don't forget we've got winter programming starting. We've got floor hockey registration open, volleyball registration open. If you want to stop by the Civic, grab a program guide, give us a call, or check out norwoodrec.activityreg.com and you can find all of our activities on there. So we hope we get to see you and everyone at one of these events this October. Well, that's all for Norwood News. To stay up to date with Norwood Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're going to leave you with a list of upcoming events happening in Norwood during the month of October. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.